AEW is broken, and it needs more than just a new set design in 2024. They've tried that with Dynamite twice in a few short years, and new colors won't lead to bigger ratings. AEW is down bad, and they continue to make the same mistakes that lead to the same underwhelming results, some of which could cool off their product for good. I don't think AEW will die anytime soon, but its fate could be even worse as the living dead and a company that just exists, like TNA after 2010, or ROH during the Sinclair broadcasting years, or ROH now, with billionaires pumping cash into a Dave Meltzer vanity project that nobody cares about, like a wrestling promotion hooked up to a ventilator machine. There are at least five ways AEW can fix its problem during lean times, and at least one of them could change its troubled identity in ways that few have ever imagined. I've been studying, praising, and criticizing AEW since the beginning, and here's how they can get up off the mat and turn things around for good. First of all, AEW needs to stop listening to Dave Meltzer. God love David, but he's in his Joe Biden bag these days. Confusing names, having to edit out large portions of The Observer for making shit up. I swear to God, our truth is a rib on Dave Meltzer. His WrestleMania coverage this year often comes off as guesswork, and the more Tony Khan listens to Dave, the smaller AEW's target audience gets. Meltzer incentivizes wrestlers to wrestle and wrestle and wrestle for the sport of wrestling through his bullshit five-star ratings. He obsesses over the boring and technical details of professional wrestling. AEW has had maybe two good years of quality wrestling content, but it's struggled mightily since 2022. Still, AEW has had 27 five-star matches in its five years of existence. WWE has had 18 five-star ratings in 71 years. That's two and a half five-star matches every 10-year average, and that's so lame. It should also tell you the correlation between drawing money and imaginary stars. Plus, some of the greatest wrestlers of all time have somehow evaded the mythical five-star match. They're only presented and solicited to the wrestlers who work the way Dave thinks they should. Chances are, the styles Meltzer rewards are the most dangerous styles that lead wrestlers to a career of injuries, limited storylines, and zero monies. Sammy Guevara and Jeff Hardy had a hell of a match. Jeff looked very, very good in this match. Did you hear he anything injury for him? Broken nose, no concussion. Yes, that Ricky Starks versus Brian Danielson strap match was incredible. They beat the shit out of each other. Now tell me the story. Right now, right this very second, tell me how this was an epic conclusion that demanded that two grown men beat the hell out of each other with belts. Why did this match happen? Who was the main character? Who was the baby face? Who was the heel? What were they fighting for? You can't do it. I'll bet you can't even tell me when or where this match happened. And if you can, good on you, and please cut the Capri Sun out of your diet. In the grand scheme of things, it'll be remembered as a great technical wrestling match for empty five-star calories. Kenny Omega and Kota Ibushi are both recovering from very serious injuries and are out indefinitely. Get well soon. Brian Danielson is working with half his vision and a busted arm. Between the three of them, they have 47 five-star matches. Tony Khan's entire roster in AEW will go down the same path if he keeps listening to Meltzer. But hey, at least he'll have millions of dollars worth of five-star matches, whatever that means. Hopefully for Tony's sake, star ratings are a form of currency in Jacksonville or Japan. Tony Khan needs to stop focusing on Vince McMahon and WWE. Many of Tony Khan's booking choices are in direct response to WWE. The promos are inside baseball references to Vince McMahon or WrestleMania. Darby Allen just did a promo putting over Cody Rhodes of all people, who left the company years ago and is a top star in WWE. The more AEW even thinks about WWE, let alone referencing them, the more it reminds the viewing public that there's a better product out there that AEW will never be like. AEW won by existing as an alternative, but now here they are trying to be just like WWE the way Stan tried to be like Marshall Mathers. AEW's No Girls Allowed Forbidden Door concept was one of the few ideas that set itself apart from WWE. 
But tell me how special that concept is now that Jordan Grace debuted in the Royal Rumble. In AEW, the Forbidden Door was a hot line. WWE made it a hot song. AEW needs to go back to the drawing board with more innovative ideas that somehow make it different from WWE. One idea AEW does need to ditch, however, is that terrible ranking system. The very idea that pro wrestling is better when it seems like a real sport is bullshit. If you have to explain a wrestling ranking system to people who don't watch wrestling, you'll come off as a dork with too much time on their hands who think pro wrestling is real. AEW already has a built-in message board fan base. We'll get into that. Don't screw up their social lives even more by having them go around defending star rankings that are about as real as star ratings. Pro wrestling needs to focus on the script, not the sport. What's the story? How can people grow with these pro wrestling characters? The reason there was so much legitimate backlash and outrage after The Rock stole Cody Rhodes' WrestleMania spot had nothing to do with where Cody and Rock ranked as wrestlers. It was all about the story and fans desperately wanting Cody Rhodes to finish his story. WWE has taken us on a ride through Cody Rhodes and people are invested. This is a storyline that has nothing to do with ratings, yet somehow it's gained meaning with every passing year and chapter. Rankings get in the way of telling a good story because it forces AEW to be held accountable by numbers, not emotion. I have a whole video about AEW's rankings and how nonsensical they are. I mean, just watch this commercial about AEW's rankings. This week, the number one ranked Swerve Strickland faces number three Adam Copeland for the right to become the number two contender for the AEW or ROH men's or women's title of their choosing. Then, over in the tag team division, number three top flight will be multiplied by number four private party. The winner will become the 12th ranked tag team and must be divided by six teams of two in order to be number one. Then, top ranked newcomer Deanna Perrazzo will face the fourth ranked Sky Blue, but not before taking on the square root of number three Hikaru Shida, carry the nine, and entered into the quadratic formula. Keep up, it's really not that hard, because over in the trios division, number two Bullet Club Gold will take on the absolute value of number five Dark Order and enter it into the Pythagorean Theory to determine their standard deviation. The AEW ranking system makes complete sense and is totally working. So do the math, buy one ticket, and get one free because AEW is coming to a half-empty building near you. So go to AEWTick.com and see AEW Live. If AEW wants to keep working these half-empty buildings, then they'll keep marketing to half-life-loving subredditors. Tony Khan's biggest advocates and allies are the ones who are bad at everything except tweeting and first-person shooters. Which makes sense because a lot of AEW's core fan base looks and acts like they could be the next Dylan Roof. Because what's on top of the house? Roof. What's on the top of your mouth? Roof. What's the last thing you want to see in a black church? An AEW fan. Because the only god they believe in is Tony Khan. That's why. Hello friends, welcome to the joy of wrestling. This week we're going to be drawing an all elite incel. You could watch along or even draw along with me if you want. Come on in, the water's fine. We're going to start out with these big gaping nostrils. Hopefully his sleep apnea machine still works. Of course he's wearing glasses to go with the bags under his eyes. In fact, let's give his eyes a little alizarin crimson. This poor fellow's been up all night eye-fucking his iPad, if you'll pardon my Swahili. Now we're going to take out our scraper. We're going to add another chin. Because most of these folks have not one but two chins. Now let's get some cadmium yellow for the teeth. Because he brushes his teeth with the same paintbrush I used for this background. Hygiene is everything, boys and girls. This subredditor looks to be having an acne breakout. So we're going to dot some cadmium red for the pimples on his face. Here's a SpaghettiO stain because whatever this thing is, it cares about its Discord channel more than its diet. So we're gonna do this thing a favor. Take some phthalo green and cover up that SpaghettiO stain with some pine trees. Just a couple pine trees, there we go. Three little trees. You can make them as big or as little as you want. And there you have it, boys and girls, an all elite incel. Please come back next week where we draw a portrait of Tony Khan riding a coin-operated pony machine. Tony Khan often gets gassed up by these dirtbags through his online persona, Tony Twitter Fingers. Anytime Tony Twitter Fingers jumps on the Bird app to rally his all-elite edgelords, it backfires. Badly. 
Khan recently caught fire for celebrating AEW's 200 year anniversary by celebrating himself. <laughs> TK desperately pushed back against his claim by saying it was a surprise for him by the crew, but the narrative was already written. Khan needs to end this social media personality and focus on how he can reclaim the magic of 2021. Khan's social media activity has been a net negative for the company, and it's all been done to cater to an audience that'll make his product less mainstream by the day. All the while, WWE is doing the opposite by going Hollywood. No, 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 not that kind of Hollywood. Good Hollywood, if there ever was such a thing. Because I don't know if you've noticed, but a lot of popular figures have been posing with the WWE Championship. Through Endeavor, TKO, and WWE's endless access to celebrity, T-Pain, Khloe Kardashian, Snoop Dogg, Snoop Dogg again, Super Bowl MVP Patrick Mahomes, and even Taylor Swift's drunk boyfriend have all partied with the WWE title. It's only a matter of time before Endeavor turns all these Hollywood celebrities into championship belt guy, the one that everybody used to make fun of, all while AEW comes off like if championship belt guy was a wrestling company. Finally, AEW needs to focus on its future, and I can sum up its future in two simple words, Swerve Strickland. Not just because it's Black History Month, in fact, every month should be Black History Month in AEW because as I predicted when AEW first signed him, Swerve Strickland is a star. He needs to be pushed. He represents everything AEW isn't and everything AEW needs to be to get its mojo back. Swerve Strickland is a cool, outspoken black man with incredible aura and a great act. His rise is inevitable can't come soon enough and actually should have happened long ago. AEW cannot afford to play hot potato with Swerve, especially given the fact that most of AEW's five-star saviors are either working hurt or out with injury. Swerve picked up his first five-star rating last year, despite the fact that he doesn't fit the Dave Meltzer aesthetic. Swerve Strickland screaming Meltzer, I don't fit you! <laughs> you see how far them five stars get you. Check out this Tony Twitter Fingers playlist and subscribe. What else does AEW need to turn this sinking ship around? Tell me in the comments.